Praise the Lord. Welcome to Cloud God's Kids and Youth. Praise the Lord. I trust the Lord that you're doing well. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Today we will be talking about taking instructions. I know that as a young person, that's something you often come across. Um, there's always adults trying to tell you what to do. And if you're a Christian, you have even more instructions to take from maybe pastors or Bible uh, study teachers or Sunday school teachers, um, in addition to your parents and at school. And so today we want to talk about um, how does what, what does God have to say about young people taking instructions? What What is God's perspective on this? We want to see what the Bible has to say. The Bible is our go-to place for any kind of counsel, any kind of counsel, because the Bible is full of the wisdom of God. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to take a minute now to just pray to God and just invite his presence in the study. Hallelujah. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for your love. Thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your faithfulness, your love, your mercy, your grace. Thank you for just this awesome time to be in in your presence. I'm excited about my friend that you've brought to just come and fellowship with me. Lord, we want to get into your word. We want you to speak to our hearts. I want to use me, Lord, and speak through me, O oh God. Let it be your very own words. Let it flow out of your spirit into my spirit, into their spirit, O oh God. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that this word will bless our hearts, O oh God, and transform our lives and cause us, Lord, not to be just hearers of the word, but to be doers. Lord, we want to please you more than anything. Have your way today. We surrender all to you. We thank you for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We have a couple of scriptures we're going to look, uh, we're going to be looking into. Um, feel free to write them down and um, uh, feel free to write them down. A lot of them are pretty short and some of them we can actually take time to memorize. The Lord will bless us as we do that. When you memorize those scriptures in your mind, make sure you're also memorizing them in your heart. Praise the name of the Lord. So we're just going to get right into the word. One of the first scriptures we want to look at is Proverbs 1, 5. Bless the name of the Lord. I'm, and I'm just going to read uh, Proverbs 1, 5. Because we have a lot of scriptures, I would just recommend uh, writing them down because I might go a little fast um, because of the number of scriptures we, we're going to have to cover. And you can go back and just read them, research them, and compare them with your notes. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And the Lord will speak to your heart even more, more, more. Um, even he would add to even what we're going to study today. Praise the name of the Lord. So what, Proverbs 1, 5, it says, Let a wise person listen and increase learning, and let a discerning person obtain guidance. So we see that the God, um, God likens someone who would take instruction to a wise person. He says, let a wise person listen. So that's, first of all, that's God's perspective. He wants us to listen to instructions. And this is not just, it's to kids, but it's also to everyone. Let a wise person listen and increase learning. He says, when you listen to instruction, you're going to increase learning. Now, before we even begin to look in depth into a, a couple of the scriptures, I want to say there are a couple of people when, when, when I, based on my title, when I say, uh, what does God say about taking instructions? We're looking at taking instructions, number one, from God or himself, from God's counsel. That's the word of God. I did briefly mention that. And another key um, category of people that we need to take instructions from are parents. Very, very important. And a lot of this is going to be tied to taking instructions from our parents. You know why? Because the parents are the ones that they are our guardians. We live with them. We spend a lot of time with them. God has entrusted them, our lives to them. In the meantime, when we're young, for them to provide that um, guidance, in, to, guidance to our future. A lot of what people end up becoming is based on just really based on their parents, really. It's a lot of how people turn out if, they're, if they had great relationships with their parents, if their parents were good parents, if their parents spent devoted time to them, how their parents treated them. A lot of the ways people turn out it has a lot to do with the, um, the impact of the parents. So it's very important that our parents are definitely one of the core people we want to 
um, listen to or want to take instruction from. And we're going to see what the word of God says. Bless his name. And other said, other people we take instructions from our pastor, our Bible study teacher, our uh, teachers in school, our Sunday school teachers. All of these people also help to shape us and um, shape us and mold us to the kind of adults we're going to become in the future. So it's important that we also listen to them. Okay. And then one thing I want to say up front, even though we're going to be looking at it, um, we're going to be looking at it really from God's perspective. One thing I want to say up front is make sure you always prioritize godly counsel. The first counsel that really would be impactful to your life, your future is godly counsel, right? The, the counsel from our teachers, they also tell us um, the right things. They try to put have us have structure in school and they give us them. Sometimes uh, they might not be Christians, but many times they tell us good things. Like they might say, be fair to somebody, you know, don't be disrespectful, conduct yourself well, you know. So they also give us advice that um, they might not quote a scripture, but a lot of those, that counsel, that wisdom um, comes from the Bible. So it's important we also listen to our teachers. So, but whatever kind of counsel anyone is giving you, be sure that it lines up in some way with the scriptures. Make sure that you can validate that guidance with the scriptures, with scriptures. Make sure it lines up with the will um, of God. And that's why you have to know the will of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So we read in um, Proverbs 1, 5 that let a wise person listen and increase learning. It's Number one, it's telling you when you listen uh, to counsel, you're going to increase learning. Okay, and it says you're going to obtain guidance, just like I said. Uh, listening to instructions and it's very, very needful because it's going to help you know, do I go left in life? Do I go right? Do I go this way? Do I go that way? It's, it's going to also protect you from getting into a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. Let's continue to um, read. So we're also going to look at one Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. It says, listen, my son, to your father's instruction and don't reject your mother's teaching. See, that's exactly what I say. That's God's perspective. He says, my son, listen to your father's instruction and don't reject your mother's teaching. Many times, especially when people start growing older, they're teenagers, something, something inside of them feels that they, they need, they're beginning to, they think that they're beginning to get smart they think they can just uh, resist their parents' counsel. They want to do things their own way. They think they're grown now. The Bible says no. It says, listen to your father's instructions and don't reject your mother's counsel. I believe that the Lord, the reason why the Lord is going to make, uh, from what we're reading, we're going to find out he's going to make a, put a lot of emphasis on our parents is because your parents are the people that would love you the most. They are the, the, the people that would love you the most. So um, I don't know that anybody else would have the generally speaking parents would have your um, uh, best interest compared to anybody else. Generally speaking, once in a while, we might have parents that have problems or issues or you have other issues that might um, make them drift away from this or not fulfill this mandate. But generally speaking, God has entrusted parents to be um, the source of guidance, the primary source of guidance for any individual. Praise the name of the Lord. So it's telling us that do not reject your mother's teaching. It says, verse 9 says, for there will be a garland of favor on your head and pendant around your neck. It's already even telling you the benefits. It says it's going to crown you. It's going to crown you with blessings and favor. Blessings and favor just from listening to your parents and following that instruction now and even when you evolve and become an, ad an adult it says it's going to bring you honor it's going to be a blessing to you praise the name of the lord we're also reading verse 23 chapter 1 verse 23 i'm just gonna flip there really quick praise the name of the lord so it says if you respond to my warning then i will pour out my spirit on you and teach you my words now, this is speaking from the scriptures. It says, if you respond my warning, then I'll pour out. This is God saying, I will pour out my spirit on you and teach you my words. This is not, this is hearkening to the word of God. Um, when we're going to find a lot of the scriptures and Proverbs, but sometimes it's talking about the counsel from the parents. Sometimes it's talking about the counsel from the word. 
and then the truth is if the council if your parents are uh god fearing and god loving a lot of the counsel they're actually going to give you is going to be from the word of god still so it says if you get counsel the counsel of the word of god it says if you respond to my warning respond to the instructions of god and then it says god is going to pour out his spirit on you and he's going to teach you his words so your responsibility our responsibility here is to tune in your ears you have to be have that hunger that heart um to want to go to to want to listen to the word of god he says i'm going to teach you my ways i'm going to give you insight i'm going to give you revelation knowledge and i'm going to pour out my spirit on you that's a spirit of wisdom when you spend time in god's word when your heart is yearning to hearken to god's voice to listen to his instruction to listen to godly counsel he says that, that spirit of wisdom is going to come upon you Praise the name of the Lord. Um, let's see. We have a, a couple of other scriptures here. Uh, so we're going to Proverbs 2. We're going to read verses 1 through 7. Praise the name of the Lord. It says, My son, if you accept my words and stop my commands within you, listening closely to wisdom and directing your heart to understanding. Furthermore, if you call out to insight and lift up your voice to understanding. See, that's why I was talking about seeking it yearning for it wanting it so you definitely with godly counsel you definitely want to go after it it says is look at some words it's, it, it, it's using here it says listening closely to wisdom directing your heart listening closely directing your heart so this is the part we play this is where you are deliberately seeking after that wisdom it says if you call out to insight it means you're yearning for it you know, um, your call out, that's where you're crying out to God. God, give me wisdom. Give me counsel. You're going after that wisdom. You have to be proactive. You go after it. You pick up your Bible. You 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 ask the Lord to guide you that day. Guide me in studying your word. I want to hear what you have for me today. Right? It says, so there's a, there's a part you play. You have to be proactive. It says, if you call out to insight, if you lift up your voice to understanding, you're crying out to God, give me wisdom, give me knowledge, give me insight, give me direction. Then it says in verse 4, if you seek it like silver and search for it like hidden treasure, there's a reason why it's saying treasure. Treasure we know is something very valuable and it equates wisdom, the wisdom of God with treasure. He says, go after it the way people want to seek after wealth or treasure or affluence. He says, seek after it like that. Go after it. Pursue after it. That's the one thing the word of God is telling us to go after. Oftentimes in the world, people want to go after different things. It's telling you what to go after. Go after the wisdom of God. Go after the counsel of God. Then verse 5, he says, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. Why is he saying seek the wisdom of God? Because in spending time in God's word, I'm telling you, over the course of time, you would develop a reverence, a holy reverence from God, uh, of God, the fear of the Lord. You begin when you understand God more, you're gonna have reverence for Him. That's why people that don't know God, they don't, they, they don't have respect for Him. They don't have honor for Him because they don't know Him. They're not born again. They don't know Jesus Christ. They don't spend time in the Word, so they don't know that they don't know God. If you know God, you have. I'm telling you, you would know to honor Him. So those are, those are the people the Bible calls fools. The fool is a person who doesn't know God. That's why they use they would use God's name in vain. They will sin, they will compromise because they don't know God. They don't have that relationship. They don't have the fear of the Lord. If they knew how great, how magnificent, and how, um, how God's nature, and that the fact that God is going to come back one day and judge this earth of sin, I'm telling you, they will have absolute reverence. So it's telling us that if we seek after him, if we go after um, the knowledge of God and everything, it says we're going to have the fear of the Lord. You're going to have that holy reverence. Uh, you're going to love God so much. You're going to admire him so much. You're going to fear him. You're going to reverence, have reverence for him. You're going to want to please him. He says that you will understand the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. That's exactly what I'm saying. You're going to know him. You're going to know him intimately. You're going to know what pleases him, what does not please him. And you're going to want to refrain from anything that displeases God. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. So let's look at some additional scriptures. I read 2, 1 through 7. I'm going to read verse 10. He says, for wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will delight you. And now it's telling you about even what you stand to gain 
from seeking wisdom and knowledge, the wisdom and knowledge of God. It says, for wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will delight you. It will be a blessing to you. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to look at Proverbs 3 and we're going to read verses 1 and 2. It says, my son, when it says my son, it also means my daughter. It means my child. It's saying, don't forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commands. Hear that again? So not only are we supposed to know these teachings, not only are we supposed to know the word of God, we're supposed to keep it in our hearts. You don't study it and then you just forget about it. And many times you'll forget about it if you don't put it into practice. If you just read it for reading sake and you're not applying it, you're not honoring God, you're not being obedient to his voice, then you're going to forget it. The enemy is going to want to save you and pull you away from it. So he's telling us, keep it in your heart, keep it and apply it. When the need arises where you have to apply a certain principle that you studied in the word of God, you pull it out from your spirit and you apply the word of God. You apply the word of God in your choices, in your decisions. Sometimes you have to speak that word of God in certain circumstances. You have to speak it because it has power. You apply the word of God. And it says here, it tells you why you should do this, why you should keep it in your heart. It says, for they will bring you, <coughs> excuse me, many days a full life and well-being. L listen, it says the word of God will bring you many days. That's long life, a full life. That's an enriched life, a blessed life and well-being. Well-being mean a good life. You're going to live well. Physically, you're going to live well. Spiritually, you're going to live well. Materially, you're going to live well, right? And our focus, always remember our focus is not on material stuff. We hold on to it because God has promised it to us. But but then we're not living, we're not, that's not the focus of our lives. I would claim a material blessing because the Lord has promised that to me. He has promised he loves us so much, he cares for us. But we should never let our focus be on that. Our focus should be on pleasing God, honoring him. Praise the name of the Lord. But so back to the blessings, he's telling us you're going to have a full life. A full life, you're going to have many days, meaning you're going to live long. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's see um, some other scriptures we have here. So we just read verse um, Proverbs 3, 1 and 2. We're also going to read Proverbs 3, 11 and 12. It says, 11 and 12, it says, Do not despise the Lord's instruction, my son, and do not loathe his discipline. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves, just as a father disciplines the son in whom he delights. It says, do not despise it. So when you hear godly counsel, do not put it aside. Do not dishonor it. Do not take it for granted. Hearken to the voice of God. Hearken to God's instruction. Be a doer of the word. Whatever God tells us to do, let's do it. Let's honor it. Let's not take it for granted. Not, let's not respond to the word of God the way the world does. Many times they like to mock. Though they would either just uh, literally mock the word of God or mock the word of God by their character, by going against it. It says, no, no. It says, we should listen to it. We should hearken to it. It says, do not despise it. Do not be angry at it. And then sometimes the word of God might come on strong to us. Sometimes people might perceive it that way because it's speaking, it's, it's in your business, right? The word of God might tell you to do something that you, in your flesh, in your human nature, you really want to do it, right? So you have to know that when you feel uncomfortable, that's your flesh. And the Bible says flesh will not glory in God's presence. So that's why it says, do not despise it, do not hate it. Do not hate the word of God because you don't want to give up your sin or something it's bringing correction to. You must honor the word of God above everything else. It's for our own good. The Bible tells us here, it says it will give us full life when we honor the word of God. It will, it will set us on the right path for, for life, for life. And if we go contrary to the word of God, there's destruction. There's destruction. I read a lot of the scriptures and it keeps telling us if you if you resist the word of God, there's destruction. It's that such a person is headed for destruction. It's a it's not a fun pathway. Hallelujah. Verse 12 tells us that the whom the Lord loves, whom that's the one he disciplines. Now, when you're close to God and you're listening to him and you're hearkening to his voice, and the Holy Spirit is correcting you, and you're seeing scriptures that are correcting certain things in your life, that's because you're already you are even in fellowship. People that do not know God, do not know how to turn to the Bible. They're not even going to know any better. And they continue to make more and more mistakes and plunge into more and more sin. 
So the fact that you're even, you're, the Holy Spirit is even speaking to you, that's a great sign that you're in great fellowship with the Lord and the Lord loves you. And the, the Lord is actually pleased with you. He might not like certain things in your life, but it, it shows that you have fellowship, you have relationship with him. Hallelujah. And also it takes you having relationship with the Lord to actually even notice that something is, uh, notice the correction in the Bible. So let's not be aggrieved when we see things in the Bible. Let's say, for example, let's say I have a habit of gossiping and I just gossip somebody and I read the Bible and I see it. I'm not going to shy away from it. I'm going to know that, oh, the Lord is bringing my attention to that. That's something I shouldn't do again. I should repent and not go back and keep doing that. Right? Right? So that, that would please, that me turning around and doing the right thing, that would please God. Okay. And he, he's bringing it to my attention because he loves me. He, he believes in me. He knows I can do better than gossiping. Praise the name of the Lord. So um, we're going to read further here. Um, Proverbs 4, we're going to read 20 through 22. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's go to 20. He says, my son, and all my daughter, he says, pay attention to my words. He's saying the same thing again. He says, listen closely to my sayings. Don't lose sight of them. Don't lose sight of them. Keep them within your heart. Remember I said, keep in your heart. Stay with the word. Stay with the corrections. Stay with the corrections that the word of God offers. Stay with the guidance and corrections that your parents offer you. Okay. They might tell you things about spending money. They might tell you things about being clean. They might tell you things about studying and being responsible with your schoolwork. You know, they might tell you things about your character. Stay with it. Those are the things that will be a blessing to you when you grow up and you're independent. Those are the things that will be a blessing. They give you that word because they love you. And God has positioned, remember, always remember God has positioned your parents to look out for you. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 22, it says, when you stay with the word of God, it says, for this is life your word of God is life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. See, again, it keeps telling us it will give us life. It will give you good quality of life. It will give you health. It's even talking about the word of God being health. That's why when we have the scriptures, we are advantaged compared to somebody who doesn't know God. If, if you have the scriptures, you're not feeling well, you can speak the word of God. It's going to give you life. By his stripes, I am healed. Somebody who doesn't have the word of God won't know any better. They can suffer under that affliction. Hallelujah. But you can speak life to your body. So he's telling you here, praise the name of the Lord. We're going to look at a few more scriptures. So um, well, I'm going to read Proverbs 5. I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. So he says, my son is saying it again. Pay attention to my wisdom. Listen closely to my understanding so that uh, you may maintain discretion and your lips safeguard and your lips safeguard knowledge. Discretion is when you have the wisdom to say, you know, I shouldn't talk like that. I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't make that move. That's discretion. You're being careful. You're being discreet. You're being careful. So it's telling you those are the benefits of being wise, of, of having wisdom. Okay. You, you're going to have, you're going to um, be mindful of how you talk and how you act. Right. And it says your lips will safeguard with uh, knowledge. So you know when to speak, when not to speak, how to speak. Things like that. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we're reading. We're also going to read Proverbs. Uh, let's see here. Proverbs 10. We're going to do Proverbs 10, 17. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm just going to flip there really quick. Proverbs 10, 17. And he says, the one who follows instruction is on the path of life. But the one who rejects correction goes astray. And if we read it, if you go and read Proverbs, there's a lot of scriptures that talk, talks about going as if you um if you don't adhere to instruction, there's going to be destruction. No, adhering to instruction leads to destruction. It tells us here if you don't listen to correction, if you reject it, you're going to go astray. It, it keeps telling you the person is not going. It's going the person is not going to have a good life if you reject instruction. You're going to stumble. You're going to have a lot of problems. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to have hardship. If you don't listen to instruction. So let us have a new perspective to receive an instruction and instruction and counsel. Counsel from God, counsel from our parents, counsel from people God has put in our lives to guide us. Like I said, it might be your Bible uh, study teacher, your Sunday school teacher, it could be your class teacher, it could be a coach, right? 
as long as you can identify that person is speaking a good thing, is speaking a blessing, adhere to it, listen to it. Do not reject that counsel. Do not make mockery of it. Do not rebel against it. These people are placed in your life strategically to mold you, to help mold you for your future, to set you on the right path. At that moment, you might it might not be that fun. The, the instruction might seem overbearing, but trust me, it's for your own good. You want you have you want to have a good future. You want to have a good life. You want to have a good life even for your own children, right? Because when you make good choices, then you're going to transfer those good choices to your your kids. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to read just from doing a, a study on this, just to tell you, just to give, tell you some benefits of just listening to counsel. He says, I already shared some. He says, um, no wisdom and counsel. He says. It will watch over you. It will guard you. It will exalt you, means lift you up, promote you, be a blessing to you. It will honor you. It will bring you honor in your life. It will place a garland of favor on your head. Like I told you, that's still honoring you. That's favor. Um, it will give you a crown of beauty. Praise the name of the Lord. He says you will live many years from listening to counsel. Hallelujah. Uh, it says you will not be hindered. Nothing is going to stop you because of wisdom and the counsel of God and listen to the counsel of your parents. It says you will not stumble. It will cause you to make less mistakes in your pathway, in your life. You will not stumble. You make fewer and fewer mistakes when you're listening, to, when you adhere to counsel, when you, you're someone who listens to advice. You're going to be wise. You'll be wiser than even your peers. You make good choices. When your friends want to go a certain pathway, you already know that that pathway is not good. It's going to lead them to destruction. Destruction. They're going to get in trouble. So you're not going to stumble. You you be you should be the one who's going to be bold now, telling them, "Hey, don't do this. You're not going to like the consequences." You should be warning them, okay? And you should put they should, they should be able to look up to you because you have the wisdom of God. So, but your sin is yeah, it's going to make you not stumble. If you make up your mind to um to adhere to instructions, to listen to instructions and not despise it or make fun of it or reject it in your mind or just say, oh, these people are boring or these people are overbearing. Don't think those kind of thoughts. That's what the enemy will want you to think. You have to subject yourself to counsel. You have to open your heart to counsel. As long as that counsel is godly and you know that it's for your own good, deep inside of your heart, you have to be true to yourself. You know that that counsel is good for you. Your flesh might not like it, right? Your flesh might, it might not be trending amongst your peers, but you know it's a counsel that will be a blessing. Embrace it. Hallelujah. After all, those friends that go ahead and do whatever they want, tomorrow day you can be the boss of them because you 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 did the right thing. You you made the right choices. You humbled yourself and you listened to counsel, whereas they wanted to go their own way. You chose to listen to godly counsel. It says it will protect your life. It will preserve your life. It will give you a, a, a guidance into living a successful life. Hallelujah. There's so much. It says it's going to be health to you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's going to make you successful. It's going to make you live a good life. It's going to make you successful. And then, then the opposite is the same. If you don't listen to counsel, it's gonna, you're going, the person's going to have destruction. And we don't want that. That's not our portion. That's not God's will. That's why the Lord already took time and put these words here for us. And he's speaking to our hearts. He wants us to make the right choice. He wants us to choose life. Choose the word of God. Choose counsel. Choose to humble yourself and receive, receive counsel. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. It is well with us. There's a lot more scriptures. You know, you can take time and just read up on just Proverbs talks about it quite a bit. A lot of scriptures on 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 why we should take instruction, why we should um, steer our hearts towards in the pathway of wisdom, receiving the word of God and receiving counsel. I want to leave this final scripture with us. It's very easy to um memorize. It's Ephesians 6 1. It says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. This is the right thing to do. Another one says, Honor your father and mother, um, so that your days will you would live long and you will have good days, right? In the future. It says, But this one is very simple. It says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. This pleases God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Thank you for sticking with me. And we, I know we've learned a lot today. Okay. So we're, right now we're just going to pray, um, close in prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. I thank you for this time. Thank you for all these beautiful things you've shown us in your word. Thank you for the thoughts you think about us. Lord, you love us so much. That's why you have brought this wisdom and this insight to us and given us this opportunity to learn about what your heart is saying, about re receiving wisdom and counsel, about being subject to instructions. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that our hearts are good seed, a good soil for the seed you've sown in it, O oh God. Our, our lives will bear fruit, O oh God. Lord, I thank you that we will bear fruit. We will not go to the left or to the right. We will walk in the right pathway. We will keep focus, oh God. We will keep focus. Lord, I thank you that this word will continue to transform our lives. And you will give us the grace to stay in your word. You will give us the grace to listen to our parents. You will give us the grace and to hearken to their voice, not to despise their counsel, oh God. You will give us that grace. You will give us the grace to listen to our Sunday school teachers and to... And, and to um, adhere to what they're saying and the counsel at school as well oh god to add you will cause us to listen to counsel that will lead us in the right path counsel that is godly and pure in the name of jesus we pray amen thank you lord for all things in jesus name we pray amen amen well i want to thank you for joining in with me on cloudy god's youth and teens god bless you keep you i'll continue to pray for you the lord is your strength you can do this you can do this. I'm telling you, you can do this. And the Holy Spirit is always there to help you. If you're struggling in any way in listening to um, an authority in your life, just call on God and say, Lord, help me. And if there's a counsel that somebody has given you and you're not very sure, pray to the Lord about it. Pray to the Lord and go into the scripture and try to uh, find in the scriptures um, what God is saying about that counsel. If it's a counsel that you're questioning, you know, but usually if you are, if you typically, if you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will give you a witness. He will confirm. You will know in your heart that it's good counsel. And if it's just your flesh that is distracting you, put your flesh in its place. Say, the Holy Spirit, help me. I want to, I want to obey this. I want to do the right thing. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus name. God bless you. Thank you for joining in with me. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye.